All right, so let's talk about some monosaccharides. A monosaccharide is a sugar molecule that can't be broken down any further and still be a sugar molecule. So mono refers to one and think of saccharide as sugar. So you can't break these down any further. Um, there's three examples of monosaccharides. You've heard of this one for sure, glucose. You've probably also heard of fructose. And there's one you probably haven't heard of, but maybe, and that is called galactose. And, oh, you know what? There is one more, and we have to draw it, and that is ribose. So we are going to draw these two sugars right here. So let's start off by drawing glucose. Now, there's a few different forms of glucose. You don't need to know all of the different forms. You just, uh, I'm just telling you that, you know, if you look up pictures of glucose, you might find one that looks a little bit different from the one I'm going to draw. And that's just because these things can be arranged in slightly different directions. Really, really, really not... Uh, they don't seem like a big deal, but the fact that they're in a little bit of a different direction makes it behave a little bit differently. So, let's draw glucose. Um, first, practice by drawing a little hexagon in your notebooks. Um, a little hexagon looks like this, and because uh, glucose is a hexagon shape. But you can't just do this, but, but practice drawing a little hexagon or two. Um, using those lines in the notebook, so you get a so you get some nice even looking hexagons. All right. Uh, the formula for glucose is C six H twelve O six. That means that there's going to be six carbons, twelve hydrogens, and six oxygens. All right. Now you might say to yourself, Hmm. I can see that there's six carbons, and a hexagon has six sides. So each intersection on the hexagon must be a carbon, but that's not entirely true. You would be five-sixths of the way there. So how does this look? First, we're going to start by drawing this intersection right here. And that intersection is going to be an oxygen. And then we're going to continue around the hexagon this way. All right, so we're going to draw a little oxygen there. And then we're going to finish off the rest of our hexagon by drawing carbons at those intersections. There's our hexagon, and we have carbons at each of those intersections now. So uh, we mentioned this in class uh, today a little bit, but carbon needs to form four covalent bonds. Hydrogen needs to form one covalent bond in order for it to be stable. And oxygen needs to form two covalent bonds in order to be stable. That's going to help you with figuring out where everything goes uh, in our picture here. I just realized I didn't give it myself enough space here, so I just erased that. All right, so that's uh, that's our start. We've got our oxygen over here in the corner, and then we finish off a hexagon by adding carbons at each of the points. Um, you, when you count up these carbons, you can see we have one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, four carbon, five carbon. That's not enough. <clears throat> So we need to add another one. So off of this, off of this top carbon, we are going to add another carbon. That gives us our, that gives us our six carbons. Okay, how are we doing so far? Good. All right, that's great. Okay, uh, there are six oxygens though, and we only have one here. So our six oxygens. Uh, the first one's nice and easy. The first one goes off of this top carbon right here. That's one. So we need to add four more. Uh, and these four are going to be added to these four carbons around here. 
uh, the pattern that we're going to add the oxygens in is down, down, up, down, which means we're going to add an oxygen down, down, up, and down. Now, once we have these carbons and oxygens on here, we can finish it up by filling in hydrogens in any place where we need bonds. So remember, carbon needs to form four covalent bonds, and oxygen needs to form two covalent bonds. So any place we don't have oxygen with two bonds on it, or carbon with four bonds on it, we can just fill in the rest of those spaces with hydrogens. So, for example, this oxygen right here already has a covalent bond here and a covalent bond here. No need to add anything else. This oxygen here only has one covalent bond. And so we fill in and finish that in by adding a hydrogen. The same is true of all of these other oxygens. Notice that it's okay if the hydrogen is to the right or to the left. That doesn't matter. However, the up, up, down, up, I'm sorry, down, down, up, down direction does matter. Okay, now let's think about our carbons. Uh, this carbon up here has one covalent bond, two covalent bonds, so it needs hydrogen on the other two. This carbon right here has four covalent bonds, I'm sorry, three covalent bonds, so it needs a fourth covalent bond right there. This carbon here has three covalent bonds around it, so we need to add a hydrogen going in the other direction. This carbon right here also has one, two, three covalent bonds, so we need to add a hydrogen there. And this carbon right here has three covalent bonds, so since we have the oxygen going down, we will add the hydrogen going up. That gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven car, eleven hydrogens. Uh oh, where's that other one? The answer is this guy right here. He looks really busy, but he does not have four covalent bonds. And there's our glucose molecule. So. That is a little messy, so let's redraw it together uh, right over here. You can try to draw it on your own and follow along with me, or try it on your own and then, while pausing this, and then check yourself to see how you did. All right, so let's draw an oxygen. And then finish off a hexagon with carbons. Toss another carbon up top. I'm going to switch colors for some things here this time. No, I won't. Never mind. Okay. Then we're going to go oxygen down, down, up, down. Notice how I'm making sure that the bond is pointing right at the carbon and not at a different bond or anything. We toss a carbon on the top. Then we've got our six oxygens and our six carbons. We add in oxygen, I'm sorry, hydrogens to the rest of our atoms to fill everything out. If you drew an oxygen going down, draw the hydrogen coming up. If you do the oxygen going up, draw the hydrogen coming down. I believe that finishes this glucose molecule. So the other molecule that we need to be able to draw is ribose. Ribose is a five carbon sugar. Five carbon sugar. Its formula is C5H12O5. Notice how the numbers of carbon and oxygen are always the same. Oh, I made a mistake. It is C10O5. Doing this from memory here. Notice how the 
Carbon and oxygens are always the same, and the hydrogen is double what the oxygen is. Okay, so this time we're going to be drawing a pentagon instead of a hexagon. Uh, but the same as last time, one of those points will not be a carbon. One of those points will be an oxygen. And in this case, it's this one right here. So let's make the oxygen the head of our pentagon and fill in the rest of our pentagon with carbon atoms. Same as before, that carbon to the left of the oxygen has a, another carbon coming off of it. Our same thing as before, uh, this top carbon has an oxygen attached to that. And this time, our oxygens are going to go up, down, down. And then from there, we fill in our hydrogens. One hydrogen here, one hydrogen here, one here, and one here. This carbon needs two hydrogens on it. This carbon needs one. This carbon also needs one. This carbon needs one. This carbon needs one. And I believe we have filled everything in. Now, I'm going to draw these structures kind of abbreviated really quickly. I'm going to draw this glucose molecule just like this here, where each intersection represents a carbon. Add two hydrogens on there. And let's talk about the numbering of these carbons, because this numbering is going to be incredibly important in class. Um, we start with our oxygen atom, and then we go around clockwise. This is carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four, carbon number five, and carbon number six. When we draw our ribose, we have our oxygen here. We have another carbon coming up here. It's got two H's on it. We do the same thing here. Uh, we start with uh, this, uh, this oxygen here, and we go clockwise around. This is carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, and carbon five. Okay, those are our two monosaccharides that we need to know. Uh, there's four monosaccharides. There's glucose, fructose, galactose, and ribose. Um, and just like we are talking about, we can combine these molecules to form bigger molecules. When we combine two monosaccharides together, we get a disaccharide. Uh, there's some really common examples of disaccharide, like sucrose. Sucrose is what happens when you take a glucose molecule and combine it with a galactose molecule. Of course, this process uses an enzyme, releases a water as a result, which makes it a condensation reaction, which is a form of anabolism. There is lactose. Lactose is a glucose monosaccharide combined using an enzyme through a condensation reaction with a galactose molecule. Just realized I was thinking about lactose when I did my sucrose. Uh, glucose is a sucrose and a fructose. Uh, then there's also maltose. Maltose is when you take a glucose molecule and combine it using an enzyme through a condensation reaction with a, another glucose molecule. There are oligosaccharides, which we will learn more about later. Oligosaccharides are anywhere from 3 to 10 monosaccharides long. And then finally, there are polysaccharides. That's when you have 11 or more monosaccharides all attached to each other. 
Even though there's 11 of them, they all get attached the same way. One monosaccharide loses an OH, the next one loses an H. Water is produced as a byproduct. This is an anabolic reaction called condensation. Um, there's a few examples of polysaccharides that you're going to need to know. There's starch, amylose, amylopectin, and glycogen. For right now, you should understand that they're more than 11 monosaccharides long, and they are attached together using condensation reactions. We're going to do a little activity in class tomorrow that covers what they do. All right. Thanks.